Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Our senior pastor right now is in the region of Karachi and Pakistan to give the conference message for the 50,000 believers that will gather. Let's all pray with one heart, whole heart and continuation so that the pastor will be able to give the accurate message in that field. Let's listen to the message. Let's all greet one another. Let's enlarge the spiritual partisan. With that, the title today is Unstoppable Faith. Today, I am meeting you virtually through the video. And as you listen to this sermon, I will be in transit to Pakistan. So I will be traveling with some elders of our church and I'll be traveling from Dubai to Karachi, Pakistan where I will lead a leadership training seminar, the LTS for 1,500 pastors on site followed by an evangelism conference with 50,000 believers. Pakistan is an Islamic country with over 97% of its population being Muslim. And they have a total of over 200 million people. And it's the second most populated Muslim country in the world after Indonesia. And just to clarify for those who are confused, Islam is a religious denomination. And those who believe in that religion, we call Muslims. And one thing that we must really look at is that Pakistan is a place with 500 out of the 5,000 tribes that we are praying for. So there is currently a wave of spiritual change happening in these fields. So our camp team went ahead and established the Yewon Regional Church in the local Gujranwala and set up the 21st Bartizan. So they've already had the establishment service. And then following that, I will lead an evangelism conference in Karachi in Pakistan for the working of the Holy Spirit to take place. So 50,000 people will gather to that place and I've never given a message at a conference that large. So I really hope you pray for that and pray about how the gospel will work upon that place with the gathered people. And I urge all of you to pray continually so that the working of the Holy Spirit, like wind and fire, may take place just as it happened at Mark's upper room in the book of Acts. So Yewon Church was established for missions. And a church that does not do missions, there's no reason for it to exist. What was Jesus' last mission or command on earth? He told us to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. That was the last command of Jesus. And a command is not something that we have a choice to do. When we continuously focus on ourselves and living and the things we eat and wear and we fight for our pride and we waste our time on useless things like that. We shouldn't do that. And especially all together, we must really go into missions prayer. And India, which shares, shares its border with Pakistan, has the third largest Muslim population in the world, with approximately 189 million Muslims. 
And if Pakistan has 500 people groups out of the 5,000, India has 2,500 people groups, which is five times more. So this emphasizes how Southwest Asia is at the core of the evangelization of the 500 people, 5,000 people groups. And our church established the Bengali church in India 20 years ago in 2004. And I actually changed the name from Kangsoro Church to Yewon Church back then. I was inspired back then. So as we established the Bengali church, I was inspired to name our church Yewon Church, which means the church that Jesus wants. And I really realized that it's important to have the minister, a really a minister that has assurance. And we believe that God will open new doors to India, which comprises 2,500 people groups among the 5,000. And it is a place where the biblical gospel hasn't been testified. And I heard through Pastor Chong Munshik that there are people that are asking for us to come into those places and also give the same um, evangelism conferences. So I really believe that there will be a day where these doors will keep opening. We've also established a new sanctuary in RUTC in Bali, Indonesia as well. And so we must really confidently and boldly go into the Indonesian field as well. So we must establish a regional church to expand the tent in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because you really need to pray for the meeting with the prepared disciples. When we pray, God opens doors to meet those prepared disciples. We don't need many. We just need the one person that has really come to the conclusion within Christ, within the gospel, that one partisan. And so through specific prayers for the evangelization of 237 nations and 5,000 people groups, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you may be a Yewon unity and Yewon missions field that experiences specific answers. The title today is Unstoppable Faith. And the phrase unstoppable carries the meaning of being so surprising or astonishing that it leaves one speechless. And simply put, it refers to being completely focused and all in into a situation or task to the extent that no one can stop them. And in today's scripture, we encounter a woman who demonstrates this incredible focus and commitment to her faith, surpassing anyone else's. And surprisingly, she is not a Jew, but a Gentile. And specifically, she's a Syro Syrophoenician by birth. So through the faith demonstrated by this woman, Jesus teaches us that we can become possessors of unstoppable faith. So I bless all Yewon believers in the name of the Lord for it to be a time of change and growth, establishing a firm partisan of faith in any situation or environment through today's word. The first main point, the faith of only. Verse 24 reads, And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. Matthew chapter 7 begins with the Pharisees and scribes questioning Jesus because some of his disciples were not keeping the legalistic traditions. And Jesus states that the centered heart is more important instead of the outwardly appearance and formalities. 
And furthermore, he states that they must come out of the introductory things and live a life that holds on to the spiritual essence. And after proclaiming this, Jesus left and went to the Gentile region of Tyre. This is the region that is now called Lebanon. And he entered a house to rest for a while without anyone knowing. However, rumors of Jesus had already spread throughout the Gentile region. And when the news of his coming spread, the locals in that region began to flock to where Jesus was. However, among those people, there was one woman who was noticeably earnest. Let's look at verses 25 to 26. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. This woman came to Jesus because her daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit. And she asked Jesus to cast out the spirit. This woman was Greek. And we are told that she was of the Syrophoenician tribe or a Gentile. However, what's remarkable is that in Matthew chapter 15, verses 22, which deals with the same situation, she comes to Jesus and she addresses him saying, O Lord, Son of David. And this phrase does not only pertain to a title, but carries great spiritual significance. O Lord, Son of David. The word Lord is called curious in the original language. And it was the expression that was used when Israelites addressed God. They did not dare to call God by his name Jehovah. Of course, we use it freely, but at the time they were unable to call God Jehovah. How could they dare to? And so they used other titles, which were things like Lord. And then the phrase where it says son of David, it was a unique Jewish way of referring to the promised Messiah. In other words, even though this woman was a Gentile, she believed that Jesus was God and that he was the Messiah, the Christ, who had come to save mankind. She truly believed that. In today's context, she confessed that Jesus is the living God who came as Christ and perfectly solved our past, present, and future. This should be the platform for which our faith begins. And this, this confession is everything. There's nothing else apart from it. And when I go to Pakistan, this is what I will be proclaiming. Jesus Christ is the only way to escape the fate of those who have fallen away from God due to the events of Genesis chapter 3 and are doomed to live in sin and curses, being enslaved to Satan and going down the path of eternal destruction. Even the woman's daughter being demon-possessed ultimately started from the problem of Genesis chapter 3. After mankind sinned, various problems began. And so Jesus Christ is the only one who can solve this cursed life problem. And so this woman truly held on to that. My daughter cannot be solved with any other doctors. However, only Jesus Christ can solve her problem. She really held on to that covenant. The Islam religion denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They do not believe it. They say He is not the Son of God. They say Jesus is inferior to Muhammad. And they just say Jesus is one of the prophets. And they also deny the cross. 
they denied the ransom of the cross. They also say that when Jesus hung on the cross, Allah took him and instead another person was hung on the cross. And in the Quran, Jesus himself stands before Allah and denies his divinity. So this is the result of Muhammad's encounter with distorted content that has been said through tradition, not the Bible, and quoting and falsifying it in his own way. And that is why the Islam religion refers to salvation through actions, not salvation by grace. In other words, Islam is nothing more than a man-made religion. And Muslims must abide by their obligations, which are called the five pillars. And without those five pillars, they cannot receive salvation. And the first includes shahara, confessing that Allah is the one God. The second is salat, which is praying for Mecca five times a day. And then there's zakat, which is paying 2.5% of their income in the name of religious tax and poverty tax every year. And then there's Saum, which is fasting from sunrise to sunset during the month-long Ramadan, which Muhammad considers sacred because it is the month the Quran was revealed in. And then there's Hajj, which calls for a once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage to Mecca. So in Islam, the standard for judging sin is whether one abides by these five obligations or pillars. And that is why Muslims act with their lives on the line. The name Muslim also means the one who obeys. It is the complete opposite of the Bible's salvation, which talks of salvation that we can receive through grace. It is the full grace of God that can be obtained through Jesus Christ. And biblical faith begins and ends by believing that Jesus is the only Christ and that only Jesus Christ is the solution to all problems of life. So I will declare the spiritual absolute truth in Pakistan based on my personal field and pastoral experiences. So now is the period of Ramadan in the Islamic calendar. And during this period, not many restaurants open and there might not even be that much food around. From sunrise to sunset, they do not eat at all. But I heard that they still do when other people are not looking. The young adults sent a video um, saying that in their forum. So I ask that all of you fight the spiritual battle with me, really concentrating and going into prayer together. So in the name of the Lord, I bless you to be the Yewan unity that realistically tastes the fruits of the Pakistan mission and bless the Pakistan field where we will experience the answer of only uniqueness and recreation. The second main point, the healing of faith. Verse 27 reads, And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. This was such a shocking answer that I wondered how Jesus could say these words. It's quite shocking. If it happened today, people would have said that it was racial discrimination and it might have gotten hateful comments. They would say, how could Jesus say that? It would have caused a commotion. Jesus showed a completely different side compared to how he healed the women from Saika with gentleness. However, in the scripture today, he shows a completely different side. Jesus' answer was like a bolt out of the blue to this woman who came with great expectations. And the Jews at the time believed that they were the chosen people, which means that they treated the Gentiles 
like animals or dogs due to their elitism. It's the same even now. If you go on the pilgrimage journey, they still look at you the same way. And I was really surprised because as I was going on the pilgrimage, the, there, they had dogs that always followed them around and they would always give the food that they were eating to the dogs as well. And so Jesus did not actually treat this woman like a dog, but she, he was just testing her. It was a spiritual test. And so he hurt her pride, which is considered like the last challenge of man. Many people get caught up here in their pride and often fall or become discouraged. But this woman astoundingly passed the test. Verse 28 reads, But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And so this woman gave a really shocking answer to Jesus' shocking question, which even surprised Jesus. She's saying, Yes, Lord, you're right. I am nothing more than a dog. But don't the dogs even eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table? I want you to grant me the crumb-like grace. So it is an astonishing and deeply moving confession of faith. And above all, this woman interpreted Jesus' answer with eyes of faith. She was not scarred or hurt by what Jesus said. She had the eyes of faith. This is what Jesus said. He said, let the children be fed first. The word first implies that there is something next. That's what it entails. First to the Jews and next to the Gentiles. In other words, she had the faith that believed the way to salvation and the solution to problems would open up for her as well. And so before pride, you must first have faith. Those who have too strong of a pride, they don't have faith. But if you truly have faith, you don't even need your pride. It doesn't matter if someone were to look down on you or talk bad about you. It doesn't matter. There's no conceit. There's no scars because you're completely dead. And you don't react to those things. Because Christ died on the cross for me and he solved all my problems. Those who have faith will not be affected by those other things. And so God really t tested my pride a lot because I was quite prideful. And so he would continuously ask me, even when I was an assistant pastor, he would ask me, are you truly dead before me? And when I was establishing the church, there might be incidents where where there might also be instances where you are faced with situations where people really step on your pride. In that situation, what must you do? Am I really dead and is Christ alive in me? So she believed that eventually the way to salvation would open up to her as well, who was a Gentile. And so the amazing providence of the salvation of God towards mankind is immersed in this part. 
And therefore, the evangelist Paul went into the synagogue where people of the same descent had gathered. And then he testified the gospel to the Gentiles. But first, he always proclaimed to the Jews first. And right now, we're going forward with the flesh and bone movement. And so, what's the flesh and bone movement? It's hoping that you can evangelize to your family members, your mother, your parents. Really, ask your conscience, do your parents believe? Do they believe in Jesus Christ? Or your family members that are living in the countryside, do they believe in Jesus Christ? If your family members do not believe, and yet you do not have a heart to proclaim the gospel to them, then in my perspective, I don't know if you have the gospel. I'm sure you go to church, you know of the church. However, if you really believe in the gospel and the existence of heaven and health, and you really believe the problems of Genesis, then you will really pay any price for your family members to receive the gospel. And I heard that there are some elders that have family members who do not believe and yet they are not proclaiming and they're not reaching out to the flesh and bone evangelism department. You must repent. The church is going forward in this amazing time schedule for the 237 Nation evangelization. We're really putting in a lot of devotion and a lot of finances and a lot of devotion, uh, efforts. And yet the family members and the co-workers that are right next to you, you must put an effort to evangelize them. Verse 29 reads, And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The answer came upon this woman who passed Jesus' test at once with her astounding confession of faith. Jesus healed the daughter of the woman. The child was healed because of her mother's faith. Do you have a problem with your child? In my perspective, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't have a problem with their child. Everyone has concerns and everyone prays for their children. But if you really do have a problem with your child, like the scripture today, you just you just have to bring it before Jesus. Just like this woman. Bringing the problem before, before Jesus itself is faith. Jesus, my son or my daughter has this kind of problem. Just like how you, how you healed this woman, please heal my child as well. If you're not going to apply the word in this way, then why do you listen to the worship? If you're not going to apply it, why listen to this worship? You must realistically apply the word. I really hope that the Yewon family will be this way. And what would the women have done after she went back to the healed daughter? She would have told the realistic gospel to her healed child. Do you know how you were healed? When I believed that Jesus is Christ and asked him, you were healed. You were healed by Jesus. You were healed at the exact moment when Jesus spoke. The only hope in our lives is only Jesus Christ. And so a clear covenant education would have taken place. 
Those who have experience, they are different. The message that they give, it's different. The team ministry for those who have experience is different. And so it's a different kind of passion and heart for our church ministers compared to other church church ministers. And the remnants who are our, our, our next generation, they are important. I also emphasize this during the Friday service. But it is important for our parents to be a model of correct faith and relay this covenant to their children so that they can stand on the precise truth of the gospel. The accurate gospel faith that they hear from their parents. They must become the children that are not just models, but also the ones that relay this covenant. The Jewish children education is divided between the father and the mother. The father teaches wisdom and ideology, and the mother teaches emotions and feelings. And so they divide the education. And Jews divide their work between man and women and focus on what each person oversees. And they generally teach the law when they educate kids, so you might think it will be very strict. But they are actually very soft and very free on their kids. And they don't get angry easily. They do not show anger in front of their children. They really do not show anger easily. And so my family, we, we were a very large family, and there was like four other siblings below me. And so that we were living while um, running a pharmacy, and our house was quite close to the pharmacy. And so because it was quite a, a large extended family living all together, there was quite a lot of trouble. However, when I was young, um, I realized that um, th they didn't fight much, the uh, adults, and they would say, let's go out. And I didn't understand what they meant by that, but it turns out that they were leaving to fight where the children wouldn't see. And so that's how I was raised. I never saw my parents fight. However, I fought a lot, which I regret a lot as well. And so really, do not act rashly in front of your children. 
And so in this way, the Jews, they lead their kids to follow the laws voluntarily and with joy. And how about you who have the gospel? Are you perhaps forcing your kids to follow the gospel like the law? Do you perhaps get angry at them and scold them and say, Did you go to Tarakbang? That in itself is wrong. It's, it's quite forceful. So it is important for parents and children to have a spiritual connection with each other. And so, may all Yewon Church families expand a gospel-like culture of comforting and encouraging your children. What you must really be most careful about after realizing the gospel is your children. When you step into your house, you must be very cautious of what you say. And outside, you can be free. However, when you go home, you must be cautious and wary of your family members. I really exp feel that even more as I do my pastoral ministry. And so your family members, they're really important because you can influence them directly. And I give my sermon as a pastor. And my children listen to my sermons. And they also see my personal life. Would they be able to receive grace? If my personal life had problems. And that's why as a messenger, I really have to uh, sacrifice and devote a lot of things. And so through forum, may a trust for one another be established and you really experience evidence of healing and restoration take place within your families. So I bless you in the name of the Lord that your family may become a representative gospel family in which the covenantal legacy of faith keeps flourishing with each generation. This is the conclusion. If you look in the book titled The Best Life, there is a phrase that says, it is only your mind that is limiting God. It is only your mind that is limiting God. It is a very short but meaningful phrase. Why can we not experience the work of God? The Almighty God. Why can we not experience the fact that Jesus is the Christ and solved all problems? It is because we are blocking God's channel with our own thoughts. And so God's storage is always abundant, but we limit His strength with unbelief and negative mindsets. And so rightfully, answers cannot take place because we are limiting God. And that's why the Bible tells us it will be done according to your faith. If you have the faith of being restored, of being healed, it will be done that way. And if you do not have that faith, then you will not receive any answers. And so the Syrophoenician women from the scripture overcame all of her unbelief and negative thoughts with the spiritual perspective of only. She completely transcended all of those things. This church is a place where spiritual beings gather. We have physical bodies, but those are just introductory things. Our physical bodies are introductory things. Do not judge according to those things, but really have the spiritual perspective, the spiritual heart. That is faith. 
So I bless all members of Yewon Church in the name of the Lord to have an unstoppable faith like this woman and become main figures of healing and restoration who enlarge the four main tents in all situations and circumstances. Let us pray. Living Father God, all of our Yewon Church believers truly came to this church that does missions and wish to pray for the evangelization of the two thirds of a nations and 5,000 people groups. So please allow us to have the same unstoppable faith like the Syrophoenician women. Let us really be able to have the clear and unshaken faith that will help us experience answers. And instead of the mindset of introductory things, and legalistic things, but really go f let us go forward in faith so that we can enlarge the place of our tents every single day within our families, within our workplaces. And with these answers that we experience, let us have thanksgiving and proclaim it in our field just like the Syrophoenician women. Please give us the healing and restoration at this place. And we have many believers suffering from illnesses. Please take pity on those people. And just like how you healed the daughter of this woman, please apply the same healing to those suffering from illnesses at this time. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.